this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. <laughs> Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen, this is Kotobuki Jake, and we're going to show you what we got. Yeah! Show me what you got! I want to see what you got! Oh, boy! <laughs> oh, I yeah. have forgotten. What's that? I have forgotten that I have something cool uh, and i will save that for the very <laughs> end that'll be a special additional pickup and i don't agree you you could not possibly with all the stuff you have you couldn't have something cool but i, I will i'm going to let you go first mm -hmm. and i'm going to run and grab it so okay Bo -bo i'm trying to see if this is the one i don't recall Trying to see which one I have. This is it, yes. So, I am going to start us off with um, a small purchase. It's unusual that I do a Right Stuff purchase that's entirely movies. Usually, there's series involved, usually. Uh, but a while back at this point, <laughs> I, I kid you not, there was so much stuff. You can kind of see to one side some of the stuff piling up. I'm going for the. I can't point in the right direction. Don't don't mind me. <laughs> I did a small right stuff order of four movies, and the first one is a movie called Hibike Euphonium Chikai no Finale, or Sound Euphonium the movie. Our Promise, A Brand New Day. Kind of a lengthy title there. Um, we have spoken at some length about this series on this channel. Um, Brandon's had the tremendous good fortune of being able to track down this series, which Pony Cam put out here in very limited release. I have gotten and watched the films Liz and the Bluebird, this, I think, is supposed to wrap the series up. So I really shouldn't watch it until I've seen the other part of the series, probably. Yep, it counts but, as season three, theoretically, according to, yeah. according to what I've read. <laughs> yeah, but I do want to see this. It, the Liz and the Bluebird was a gorgeously animated film with lots of great music, and my understanding is that the whole series is kind of in that mm -hmm. vein. So if you like music themed series, but one day I'll get around to watching this, but I couldn't pass it up for the price. <laughs> it certainly is relatively cheap overall. Mm -hmm. I think I got my copy for 14, which is not terrible. This one was, it was probably around 15 or 16. I yeah. doubt it was that cheap, but yeah. So, you know, it's not... <laughs> It's not terribly, it wasn't terribly badly priced, uh, mm. especially if you compare it to what the series runs for. Oh, geez. Second season, <laughs> because you can't find the first season to have a price on it. <laughs> well, you can if you're like you and you import well, uh, The UK release is like the, <clears throat> for the first season. But one of the reasons I'm thinking about a region free. <laughs> Well, this one is one that uh, comes from an order that uh, I got from Dustin. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we did a, we actually did this and covered it, but I never had it in my collection. So I finally saw it, and uh, he gave he gave it to me for like two bucks or something. I can't remember. It was one of the ones in the cheap pile. Mm -hmm. so I finally got myself a copy of the Changeling. Ah, now the Changeling is this movie about this guy, this writer. He kind of lost his family in an accident, and so now he's a uh, musician, I should say. He goes to this mansion um, to do some work and finds out that it's haunted. Hmm. So he has to actually go around and find out the mystery. You were, you were around with the Changeling. You watched that. I did indeed. It was all right. There was that scene at the end that still strikes me. It's a fairly slow-moving one. Mm -hmm. I guess I was surprised Dustin liked it so much because of how slow-moving <laughs> it was. But uh, where the railing actually lights on fire slowly, and that's just so cool. I love that effect. Hmm. I, I am I am a stickler for for cool effects and timing, and this one had some very cool effects uh, to it. Mm -hmm. It didn't have a lot of like significant ones, but the ones it had mattered. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. Next up, also from that purchase, and probably about the same price, if I remember correctly, is the fourth and final of last year's releases per Oscar. Like, the fourth of the films that were actually submitted from Japan for consideration for animated feature. Um, as of you've watched on here, you've seen that I have already presented... Uh, Weathering with you, Oko Zen, and Promare. And now we have one that, you know, is sort of an inside movies galore uh, tie in. Now that I look at the official Japanese title, I suspect this would be up uh, Moe's Alley since it's called Kaiju no Kodomo. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is Children of the Sea. Ooh. Which, um, basically, it's from Studio 4 Degrees C, and basically the people behind Tekong Concrete and MFKZ, and director Ayumu Watanabe, scored by Ghibli's in-house composer Joe Hisaishi, so you know it's going to have some uh, pretty quality music there. And um, basically... Uh, let me see. I'm just looking up real quick. The director is known for Ace Attorney. Yeah. Uh, if Her Flag Breaks, that was a fun series. Mysterious Girlfriend X, Space Brothers. Okay. That's a random assortment, isn't it? And a whole bunch of Doraemon. Uh, <laughs> And so basically the gist of this movie, apparently it's about a girl, Yuka Aruka, a young girl whose parents are separated and whose father works in an aquarium. When two boys, Umi and Sora, sea in the sky actually, who are raised in the sea by dugongs are brought to the aquarium, Ruka feels drawn to them and begins to realize she has the same sort of supernatural connection to the ocean so this also reminds me a little bit of a lull in the sea from the basic plot premise. So I'm very curious about this. It looks good. It has a middling a and rating, but, you know, I have a feeling just not enough people have seen it. This was one I was going to go to the Fathom event, and it was scuttled because it was right after the whole COVID thing. Uh, I think this was set for like a mid-April release, and that didn't happen which kind of sucked, but I happily snapped it up when it became available on physical. <laughs> Sorry, cats are fighting. Clearly. <laughs> Did you ever watch uh, Tekken and Creep? Uh, I believe you showed it to me. I, I haven't seen MFKZ yet. I say, it's the only one of those I watched. I am envious of that one because I would like mm -hmm. to see it. I love the cover. Mm-hmm. But uh, I like to see a lot of things. <laughs> and one cool thing about these, we've commented before, this one has interviews with the English cast, which is mm -hmm. something. This one has a crap load of bonus features. It's got, like, by anime standards, 
that's a crap load of features there. <laughs> and it says on the cover, two hours, you know? Hmm? This is even better. It has interactive menus, Ooh. subtitles, and chapter selections. Oh, man. It's hard to beat that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of... Actually, you know, I'm sorry, though. You know what would be awesome with that movie? Hmm? If George C. Scott did the audio commentary in the character of Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that. I just... <laughs> well, I got uh, an old school pickup from the Dollar oh. Tree. Oh. And that is a movie with Dan Aykroyd, Damon Wayans, and Daniel Stern. Huh. Can you guess what movie that is? Actually, doesn't ring a bell. All right. It is Celtic Pride. Ah, uh, yes. I never did see that. It's an interesting. I have no idea why I was thinking Marlon Wayans. That's probably what threw me off. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting one. Kino released this. Not a lot nice. of special features on it. There's a commentary by uh, Tom. The uh, De Cherico? De Cherico. You, picked a, you picked up a Kino release at Dollar Tree? Yep. Nice. This is an old Dollar Tree pickup, too. It was just kind of sitting there. Mm. Mm. But uh, essentially, these two, they really are Celtics fans. And this guy here is a star player. So they end up kidnapping him in order to try and make sure their team wins. <laughs> Good deal. It's it's an interesting it's a nice comedy I've seen it a couple of times um, it's it's one of the older it's you know ninety six so it's got it's older than I would like to think almost twenty five years old. Mm. I had to see that one of these days, <laughs> but I was still in high school when it was out. <laughs> you know, you get all these reminders about how old we're getting. I mean, well, I, I, you can say that you were you were in a lower grade. In high school, I, think I could. In, school, in 90s. What happened? You were in high school in '96, right? You weren't. You were like what freshman? Probably. I always yeah. lose track of the exact dates. Because I was a junior in '96. That right. sounds about right then. So, in any case, hmm. back to you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see how it is. Okay. Now, my next one is one that's been on my two watch list for a while. This was also on the short list for Oscar, but it didn't end up getting a nod. But it's not an anime, but I still got it from Right Stuff, because every now and then they do that kind of thing. And this is a French film. <laughs> a foreign film. Oh, the evening is saved. I like French films, pretentious, boring French films. I like French films. Three tickets, see vous play. Ow. Q.J. Sherman, by Sebastian Lodenbach. So it might be a French-German film. I don't know, but it's a, it's actually a what? French film based on the tales of the Brothers Grimm. And it's called La Jeune Fille Sans Main, which I probably butchered that because I always do with French. Yes. But it's um. The Girl Without Hands. And... Mm. I honestly don't know how much I know this tale at all. The basic IMDb thing, in hard times, a miller sells his daughter to the devil. Protected by her purity, she escapes but is deprived of her hands. Et cetera, et cetera. As you do. Being, well, being a brother's grim tale, that sounds about right. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it's apparently a very minimalistically animated movie. Um, kind of puts me in mind a little bit of like what they were going for with the tale of the Princess Kaguya, but yeah, maybe even okay. more minimalist. Almost but, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, a minimalist uh, fable from France based on the Brothers Grimm, it's going to be loads of fun, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. I've been wanting this one for a while. It did get a lot of buzz when it came out. I do need to see it. And Right Stuff had it at a pretty good price. It was either 11 or 12 bucks, which is not too bad. Hmm. Well, 
I have a film with a stunning cast next. Nice. The film has James Corden, Judy Dench, Jason Derulo, <laughs> Jennifer Hudson, Ian McKellen, Taylor Swift, <laughs> Trevor Wilson, <laughs> and was directed by Tom Hooper with a okay. Andrew Lloyd Webber score. <laughs> Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to say right now, if we win films you are thankful for, this better be your submission. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about the film Cats. Uh, nice. You know I couldn't let a film that's supposedly as bad as this. Exactly. Go. Now, unlike the others I have on here, there's no shortage of extras here. <laughs> That yeah. is a hell of a cast. <laughs> so you have commentary, you've got uh, dancing, extra dance numbers, little featurette says, a nice like thing. You can see the slipcover has seen better days, but the mm -hmm. price is really low. It was under 10 bucks. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I could get this because, you know, it's good to support terrible cinema. I'm going to wait for Black Friday when it's four bucks. <laughs> I was curious enough about it, and I went ahead and decided I would get it. I mean, it can't be that bad. Can't have it. I've, actually never, 2016. I've actually never seen the Broadway uh, the Broadway show. Uh, oh. I, I don't think I've only seen I've only uh, seen a cup heard a couple of the songs. Yeah. Which I think everyone. I think everyone's heard memories. I mean, yeah. that's like a given. But yeah, I don't think I've ever seen it either. And everything tells me, and I need to get like the actual stage performance, uh, mm -hmm. movie, which is out there. Actually, there's a Blu-ray out there. Mm -hmm. Watch them both back to back, mm -hmm. and then see how it compares. Project one day, <laughs> one day down the road, when Criterion puts that in the tinfoil collection, maybe they'll have the other one as the bonus feature. <laughs> Maybe, maybe indeed. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right. My next one is notable. This is the last one from that one right stuff order. So um, this one is a film I really wanted for a long time. And I was dragging my feet and finally I pulled the trigger, partly because it was consistently expensive. And, you know, it just never seemed to go on sale. I mean, it's not expensive, expensive, but it just never went on sale. So I think I got it for like 16 or so. This is notable as one of the few animated films Criterion is likely to put out one of these days because it's so far up their wheelhouse that I can't see how they cannot. Okay. <laughs> because it's a film that's a live-action oil canvas. And I'm talking, of course, about the film Loving Vincent. Uh -huh. which is a phenomenal animated feature, phenomenally animated. Um, you know, it's got an interesting cast, Douglas Booth, Jerome Flynn, Helen McCrory, Chris O'Dowd, Circe Ronan, uh, Aiden Turner. You know, Circe Ronan, probably the biggest name in that cast. But it's just such a gorgeous film. And the whole thing was oil-painted. It's the first feature film done that way. Probably going to be one of the only ones ever done that way. And, of course, it's a mystery, uh, sort of a mystery, revolving around Vincent Van Gogh. Um, and it's so much more entertaining than the film that got Willem Dafoe the Oscar nod at, at Eternity's Gate. <laughs> It was a good film, but this was a good film. <laughs> there, and, hmm? I've seen I, I've seen At Eternity's Gate, but I have yeah. not seen that. I own you it. Need, yeah, you need to watch it eventually. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this one I'm very glad to finally have it. And again, this was an atypical right stuff purchase. You know, just four movies, but I think it was a fun one. <laughs> That's an interesting purchase. Yeah. Most of which aren't even really anime. <laughs> well, half of them, yeah. <laughs> Animated. 
Uh, speaking of animated, I have another one, but this one actually does have a good number of special features, mm -hmm. and it's not cats. <laughs> That's always a plus. <laughs> but it's definitely not a huge step forward. Oh, really? I'm slumming it this week. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, it's a film I think you liked it uh, uh, very much. Um, it's an anime film with Owen Wilson uh -huh. and Larry the Cable Guy. Okay. So we all remember when Cars came in and uh, didn't win the Oscar for Best feature, <laughs> Best Animated Feature <laughs> as uh, a kind of breaking, really, uh, Pixar's streak. <laughs> yeah. I think they did it on purpose. I think they threw it on purpose. Like, let's mm -hmm. see if we really do have a lock. Let's see if we can just put this together and see if we can lose. No, then, I don't think so. Then they totally threw caution to the wind and said, let's make a sequel to that. And we've got Cars 2, <laughs> where the Cars are actually doing a spy movie. So we're doing James Bond in the Cars mm -hmm. universe with Mater. Oh, no, what? As they say in that one, <laughs> Mater, Tome Mater. <laughs> now I admit I haven't seen the third film, which I've heard is better than this one. Oh, this third one's quite good. But um, I still do need to sit back and just think about it. It's got some fun stuff on it. I mean, you've got um, <clears throat> the Cars tunes, the Cars tune Air Mater, the Toy Story short. Hawaiian Vacation. Mm -hmm. You got director's commentary. So you got some fun stuff there. And Hawaiian Vacation is a funny short. I really liked it. Where they had like Barbie and Ken going on their little Hawaiian vacation <laughs> they made for them. Toy Story shorts are fun. Right. But in any case, I will let you go. All, all right. So <clears throat> my next one. And I mentioned before, the last couple of weeks, I've, I've made a point to mention that I'm working, sorry about that, that I'm working really hard on getting, plugging in the holes of the best films of the year for me. You know, the, the ones that are like, <clears throat> these, are, these are the good ones, you know, these are the awesome ones. And uh, Loving Vincent is notable as my, Ninth favorite film from the year 2017. Um, and I just realized I have another one in the pile behind me from this year. I don't know if you want to go to seven, but if you don't, then we'll do it next time. <laughs> I can because I've got one that can throw okay. it. And I'll grab that in, in, in just a bit. But the number ninth one um, is Loving Vincent. Um, and I already had most of the rest of it. Number seven is Silent Voice. Number six, Thor Ragnarok. Number five, In This Corner of the World. Number four, The Shape of Water. Number three, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Number two, Lady Bird. And number one, here's Pixar with Coco. So actually, I'm going to be polishing off the top ten. Cool. Number eight is a film <coughs> exec produced by Angelina Jolie. And directed by Nora Tuomi, the co-director of Secret of Kells and the art director of the, of the Song of the Sea. And it's a little film called The Breadwinner. Ah. Which was also a flippin' awesome movie. And I mean, again, the fact that these two came out the same year as A Silent Voice and Coco, that was a year for animation. I mean, that was an incredible year for animation. So basically, this one is um, focuses on a young girl named Pravana who is growing up under the Taliban in Afghanistan. And when her father is wrongfully arrested, she goes on disguise as a boy to keep the family solvent by, you know, as the breadwinner. Um, so it's a really good, uh, really good film. Um, Strangely enough, was kind of seems like the kind of thing that would have been accused of like uh, cultural appropriation or whatever. And strangely, I don't think it was. So I guess everyone just thought it was a really good movie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, glad to finally have it, though. 
<laughs> so my next one is not very big on um, special features. Mm -hmm. But it's one that I needed to get for a while. It's a well-done film. And one I think that unfortunate was unfortunate timing-wise. Ah. And that is the Matthew Broderick and Jim Carrey film, The Cable Guy. <laughs> now, The Cable Guy, unfortunately for Jim Carrey, he had kind of come off of his, like, all these zany characters. Yeah. They come into one of these here, but with a much darker bent. I felt like oh, yeah. it was when we really got to see one of the few, one of the first times, I want to say this person, preceded some of his dramatic films yeah. and I really think that this is one of the first times we got to really see Jim Carrey stretch his range a little bit am I remembering correctly that, that was directed by Ben Stiller yes yeah he tends to do very dark films as a director <laughs> so you know this goes up because Jim Carrey is a very talented actor mm-hmm I mean, uh, we've seen a lot of stuff uh, with him. And I mean, I actually went to medieval times when I was over in uh, Vegas. So mm -hmm. I get to see it and get that uh, thing. It's about a guy who basically gets uh, gets free cable after he's been told to ask the cable guy if he'd do it. Mm -hmm. he befriending the cable guy, unbeknownst to him, he really doesn't mm -hmm. want the guy as a friend. <laughs> Uh, they get some pretty twisted stuff that develops here, and he kind of mm -hmm. setting that uh, choice and friendship right there. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I really want to see this again. I need to bust it open and just watch it. Since my Oscar mm -hmm. project is off for a little bit, maybe mm -hmm. I'll be able to get some time together. I still have an anime series, though. I've got to watch because it's used, and I haven't, you know, haven't. Right. Taking the time as subtitled, and whenever something's subtitled, mm -hmm. I have to find like extra time for it that I normally don't have. Those are usually much harder for me to get to at. Mm -hmm. All right, so my next one um, one thing I forgot to mention about this that is actually one of my few minor quibbles when I look at the pedigree behind it. It makes me sad that Bruno Calais did not do the music, but Michael and uh, Jeff Dana did the music, and they're pretty friggin' awesome too, but Bruno Calais is in a class of his own. And speaking of movies w involving Nora Tuome, one I picked up a while back. This has been sitting, I think this was one of my spring right stuff purchases. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but this was one that I've been wanting for a while and, again, just didn't seem to go down in price. <laughs> and I think they finally dipped it a couple dollars down. Um, the third one in the triptych, I still haven't gotten Song of the Sea because it never goes below 20. But I did finally get The Secret of Kells, hmm. which this one does feature a phenomenal score by kool that was robbed of an Oscar nod. It should have gotten one. But the movie did get an animated feature nod, which is what introduced the world to Tom Moore and his work, pretty much. Or at least the American part of the world. <laughs> um, and this is a really, really, really good movie. It's aimed at a younger audience than a lot of the ones I've been talking about. I feel like this is a little bit more of a straight up family film or even a kid film, but it's really well made and anyone can enjoy it. And again, the music is phenomenal. And this one does come with some pretty good bonus features. So, you know, that's going to be pretty fun if I ever get to look at that. But again, this one was a long time coming. This was all the way back in 09, but I finally got it. <laughs> you know, Secret of Kells is one of those that just never really dipped low. Mm -hmm. Is that, I mean, yeah. it was just, I got it for a, a gift that, that was nice. Somebody gave me the gift of that one in Song of the Sea together. Yeah. Uh, it was just, you could mm -hmm. rarely 
find it under 20. It was just, uh, yeah. that's amazing how that held price. Wasn't mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. So this one is one that I got as a streak of luck. Somebody posted something in the Animazing uh, in Collectors and Ink group. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh. Well, I guess they, they've probably already uh, gotten through that auction and then realized, oh, I guess they haven't. So I managed to get this. I normally would wait for both parts to come out as one. And I'll talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about that in a minute. But... Um, of course, I'm talking about Bamboo Girl, the series. <laughs> the Bamboo Girl, which is right there, she is a uh, lovely young girl who grew up in a ninja village. But then she found a piece of bamboo. And then she, when she put it in her mouth, she became Instagram famous. And now you must navigate all of the perils of being an Instagram star and a popular meme and deal with all of the pressures they're in. Okay, that's not really it. It's going to be a part one. But I swear, for the longest time, you never saw anything about any of these characters. It was just her. And yeah. it was meme after meme after meme of her. And I'm like, who is the girl with the bamboo in her mouth? Mm -hmm. What's that about? <laughs> so finally I'm getting to see oh, got the wrong a kid. popular meme. And also a very popular series for that year. This was actually pretty mm -hmm. big. I was upset when Anaplex got this. Mm -hmm. So I paid this. I paid pretty reasonable for this. Mm -hmm. Anaplex is 130 for this. For just that part or the whole thing? This part. Yeah. So... My hope is, since Sony owns both, that maybe mm -hmm. what's going to happen is they're going to start... Of course, then again, it might be the end of Funimation's premium. Mm -hmm. But we could start seeing Anaplex doing the special edition mm -hmm. and Funimation doing the regular edition release. Which, in a way, I'd like to see that because I, as much as I would hate to see some of these Funimation premium sets go... At the mm -hmm. same time, I would love seeing a lot of these Ana Anaplex acquisitions become affordable. Yeah. So uh, one definitely outweighs the other for me. I'd like to have both. But mm -hmm. if I have to have only one, I'll take that. I think we are going to get a little bit of both. Not entirely both, but just the mm -hmm. ones that they feel are popular enough that they don't feel like they can shell out 130 bucks for like half of a series right i mean good lord indeed all right so uno mas <laughs> one for you so, one more for me yes so i mentioned that these two are going to knock out two more of my top 10 for the year 2017 um and i'm looking at my list now actually it looks like i'm actually going to be all the way down to number 17 I'm missing the last three in the top 20. I still need to get Phantom Thread, Battle of the Sexes, and the Disaster Artist. But I believe I got Molly's Game. And I know I have Wonder Woman, Wind River, Mary and the Witch's Flower, Darkest Tower, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and I, Tonya. What about so, the Phantom Thread? Oh, I didn't get the Phantom Thread yet. I'll have to do that eventually. <laughs> um, you know that's the secret number one, right? <laughs> so... Um, but number 10 on the list was a very late edition, partly because it was a very late release here in the U.S. It didn't actually bow in the U.S. in leagues outside of festivals until 2018. And even then, I didn't get a video release, and it got a very, very limited home release at that until 2019. And it came out via a little outfit called Cohen Media, Cohen Media Group, which they do. We talk about ultra-limited stuff like Anaplex and Arrow. I'm becoming convinced Cohen Media Group is even more so. They, they put stuff out for libraries and public institutions, but you never see their stuff in the wild. And that's kind of frustrating. 
the uh, Agnes Varda set coming out, I'm excited because it has Faces Places. The only prior release of Faces Places was from Cohen Media Group. So, but anyway, this is a film that I have talked about on this channel because I loved it. And it is a uh, film that was a Lebanese uh, release, if I'm remembering correctly. It was a Lebanon's uh, submission for the foreign language Oscar and actually uh, got a nod that uh, year. And that is a film called L'Insulte or The Insult. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> and as I mentioned before, basically all this is, is it is a drama between two men, a Lebanese Christian and a Palestinian refugee. And the Lebanese citizen uh, gets really angry that some workers are disrupting his peace or whatever, and does some jerky things to them, like pour water on where they're working. And then the foreman of the workers gets really PO'd at him, and that just escalates. It turns into a court case. The boss of the foreman, who happens to be friends with the other guy, is trying to work as a go-between. And basically, when it comes down to it, this is a movie about pride and the inability of people to overcome it, pretty much. Hmm. And there, neither one of them is entirely in the wrong, and neither one of them is in the right, you know? So I, it was a really well done movie and I loved it. And I'm thrilled that I was actually able to find a copy. Cause like I said, this is a rarity. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, Oh, there we go. And mm -hmm. boom. so my last one was one I had, uh, I had to run out to the car to get. Um, <laughs> and of course from the rebel gaming club, he sent me a message, mm -hmm. uh, but it was to my uh, regular Facebook account, which I never check anymore. Uh, um, and then eventually I'm like, dude, you know I have an account that I actually do check, right? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so he asked me for my address. I'm like, okay, here you go. And then I got these things in the mail. Nice. Uh, so he sent me a copy of, uh, his, uh, of their new album, uh, Bop Star, Twice Chewed. <laughs> which, is his, uh, which is his take on bubblegum pop. <laughs> interesting thing. This is the nice. thing here. And a lot of the um <clears throat> a lot of the stuff, I mean he made this drum set, which you may or may not get to see, which mm -hmm. kind of resembles like the Partridge family he painted and uh, did to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm um, trying to see. He basically, he was trying to emulate bands like the Calcils, uh, the Sweet, and the 1910 Fruit Gum Company. <laughs> okay. I don't know any of those. But apparently, it started when he found a uh, 1999 Fender Squire. So, hmm. which, you know, this is kind of a quarantine album. Mm hmm. Uh, of course, as we know, Dan was the, as the uh, lead singer of the River City Rebels, and they're coming out with a new album soon. This is going to be out for purchase soon, so you need to be able to check with the Rebel Gaming Club. So if you haven't subscribed, you should. Mm -hmm. Because you'll want to get this. If this is as rare as the Rebel Gaming Club, it's going to sell out soon, and you really want to get a copy. Because I've listened to, let's see... I've almost listened to all of it. I only really have listening time when I'm driving. Um, mm -hmm. So I've listened to all but like a couple songs left, and there are some pretty good ones on here. So mm -hmm. it's well worth checking out. A lot of the songs are very catchy, as Bumblegum Pop is, like mm -hmm. to be. And you find yourself only kind of singing along with it as you go along. So it's kind of very nice and light for times. And trust me, times need to have some lightness to them. Mm -hmm. The only problem I have with it is, as you can see, this is what it comes in. Yeah. Can you see a problem with uh, carrying a CD through this? <laughs> There's no, like, pocket or anything. It's, I didn't realize it. And then, <laughs> yeah, they usually at least have a pocket. 
Mm. He also sent a, a, a bonus, which I'm sure you're going to find entertaining, mm. which is Fred Speaks. Ha <laughs> ha. You also got one of these. Nice. Is, uh, basically, uh, of course, we did Man with a Plan. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of a. So you got to see a little bit of this. If you haven't seen Man with a Plan, you should. <laughs> the Vermont trilogy in general is good. So if you ever find it, you should check mm -hmm. it out. It's fun. It's about an older uh, individual who decides to run for Congress. Well, that one is Man yes. with a Plan. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun. I mean, you see that nice picture of the covered bridge on the back. Uh, but it's got here. So you can find uh, fine tracks like Corn, Beef, and Potatoes. Young Fred, Turnbridge Fair, Ernest, Kermit, and Fred, <laughs> Beer Recipe, How Many Tits on a Cow, <laughs> W2, <laughs> Modern Times, and White Christmas. Oh, so you get to hear him sing White Christmas. <laughs> I've got to, I've got to do that. <laughs> Nice. So once I get done listening to this for a while, mm -hmm. this is also going to be in my car. It's cool enough that I'm not worried about leaving stuff in the car now. So I think it's going to be good. This is my next up. Uh, but I okay, so we started and ended with with great commentary tracks. Well, <laughs> one of the world's great missed opportunities is Fred Tuttle doing the commentary track to White Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I think that's a good pickup. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, yep. What did you pick up? Let us know in the comments down below. Of yep. course, uh, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and of course, share. Because, you know, sharing is caring. We, we all mm -hmm. care. Yep. So we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.